Hello everyone, welcome to an episode of Music of the Week, the first episode of Music of the Week of 2023. So, we have about five albums to get through. I don't have much to uh, add until maybe the intro of the video, so let's go through these five albums really quick. We begin with Anti-Flag and their newest album, Lies They Tell Our Children. Anti-Flag are one of my favourite all-time bands, I would say. Definitely one of my favourite American punk bands. Um, the, like, closest to, like, proper punk rock, maybe, in this entire episode, and, yeah, I'm a bit biased, and this is the first album review I'm giving, uh, of, of 2023, the first album I reviewed of 2023 of the shit that I care about, and I'm giving it an A. I mean, Anti-Flag are just absolutely phenomenal at what they do. I love how they always pack each song with a lot of fury. There is a siren going on outside right now, so I apologize if you hear that, but, uh, that's distracting. But yeah, Anti-Flag are always full of like very good raw punk energy. They do actually try and use a concept story, uh, which is mostly told through the fact that they have a lot of guest stars, all of whom put in great performances, like Stacey D from Bad Cop, Bad Cop, uh, Shane Toll from Silverstein, Jesse Elite from Killswitch Engage, which is a collab I didn't know I needed until I got it. Which, you know, it worked well. But it is your typical anti-flag lyricism as well, very, like, focused on political corruption and greed and so on, and the ties with the religion that it has. Uh, the instrumental work is also really, really good as well. There's not as many sellers as I'd like there to be on an anti-flag album, but the riffs are just really great. I like the bass work as well. Chris Number 2 is a great bassist, and, yeah, the performances are solid as well. Um, Chris Number 2 and Just Insane have an insanely great, um, <laughs> insanely, uh, vocal chemistry. Uh, Pathetic strumming is really good too. The production's quite Quite smooth as well and that's often a problem that anti-flag can have at times but it actually sounded very very clean but still with enough like of a raw edge to it so it didn't sound overly polished uh, structure wise again it's an anti-flag album it's not going to be a super long one but what we get out of it is still a lot of fun and it's a really good anti-flag album so i'd recommend you go and uh, check it out for yourself next we have circa waves with never going under these are a british uh, sort of indie rocky poppy sort of Ting, and um, if I can give some advice on uh, for these, even though you're probably not going to watch the video, don't check out Rate Your Music, because they can actually be a little critically harsh. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd bring that up now, because I'm giving this album the lowest grade of the episode, but it's a B-, minus. so there are a lot of solid things that I like about the album. For example, I like the cleanness of the instrumental work, I like the lyricism. It is a bit saccharine at times, but it also comes off as very like earnest and heartwarming at other points as well. Um, it does actually try and focus again on a little sort of like story of relationships and broken love and things like that. Um, the performances are all pretty good. The production's okay, the structuring can... Feel a little bit dragged out at points, I will admit. But it's still got some really good highlights, so it's still got some really strong stuff going for it. Um, yeah, I I liked quite a lot of the facets of this album. I think too many people are giving it too much hate. And for my first look at Waves album, I could have looked at it a lot worse. But I don't know, there's just something very peaceful about enjoying it. Maybe it's the fact that I don't, when I was listening to it, I was downstairs with my dog and she was also good up in my lap. And I just felt like this euphoric bliss from that mixed with the album. Um, I think with that in mind, the grade might still say the same, though. Um, still a really good album, definitely want to recommend you check out, if, if you've heard a slight buzz about Circle Waves, because, to my knowledge, they're a very, sort of, new act, or they haven't been around for all that long, so, um, yeah, no, this was some really good stuff. I, I liked it a lot more than I think I thought I would. Next, though, we do go to a debut, and technically this is cheating, because technically this album did come out on October 25th last year, however... This is a reissue of that album, and I'm counting it as a different version of the same album, because I've done that before for albums, I'm doing it here. Feeble Little Horse with their first album, Hey Day, spelled H-A-Y-D-A-Y, because it's it's a pun, you see. Uh, this is a sort of noise indie, rock punky sort of group, and I'm giving this album straight up a B plus. This is the shortest album on this list, by the way. It's like under 26 and a half minutes long, so it's not going to take up too much of your time, but... I really enjoyed a lot of the assets uh, of this album. I liked how murky the instrumental sound was, which is to be expected when it comes to noise rock in general. Um, I really liked the vocal performance of the lead singer, whose name I can't forget, I just know it was a female. But mostly I liked how dark the lyrics were and how sort of degrading they were in a way as well. Because, you know, again, it sort of depicts a relationship and the... Yeah, a very abusive one at that as well. It's not like Circa Ways one, which is a bit more, like, happy and, you know, like, love them, let them go sort of thing. This is much more of a dark and grounded take on that sort of thing and 
sorry for my hair. And I think I sort of empathize with it more a bit in that way because, yeah, it's not a really great situation to, to be in for anyone. Uh, again, the performances are great. The production's really good, so I love how dense and focused it can be at times. And structurally wise, for an album that's not that long, it does get a lot done. However, I could have done without the remix song at the end of a song called, I think it's Termites, which is the second uh, song on the album. But, like, I think because of this being the reissued version, that was something that they had is on making it 13 songs instead of 12. But they didn't really need to add on a remix of a song that was already on the album. That's always something that's never made sense to me anyway. But, yeah, I still recommend going to check this one out. I just like the pun of the title. I like the lyrical themes. Performances are great. Just really, really good uh, noise punk. And we go from a debut to a band that's been around a long time, Obituary, with their new album, Dying of Everything, unlike the rest of the albums on this video, including the last one I'll be doing. This is a death metal band, and this is very much a death metal album, and it's really good death metal, giving it a B. Um, <clears throat> so, the main things I do enjoy about it, I really like the instrumental work, it's very, very heavy. Not a lot of solos, but it's very tightly focused when it wants to be, and it does that quite a lot. It pulls a lot into the structuring as well. It's very, very heavy. It knows what it's going for. The production's really good too. I like how it sounds and I like how it mixes in the vocals very, very well. I feel like they're a bit downplayed at times, but it's not an overly obvious thing. And the performances are fucking great, especially the drummer's name. I think his name is Donald Tardy. It's something Tardy. He's an absolutely phenomenal drummer. Where this lacks a little bit for me is the lyrics, because there are lyrical themes and they're usually about the typical death metal things. But there's not a lot of actual words said, which is weird to me. Because usually if you're empathizing, uh, like going to emphasize death metal, especially for a band that's been around for nearly 40 years, you want to put more of a story into things, but there just wasn't really... A lot of this, it just felt a bit malnourished in terms of its lyrical content, but that's not what the focus of it is. Like, the, the focus is on the great instrumentation, the great production, and the great pacing, so... And the great presentation in the production and performances. So, yeah, I mean, if that's what you're there for... Go check this album out by all means, it's really good death metal, especially for a band that's been around for a long time, especially considering that this is that band's first album in six years. But don't expect much if you're going to try and read through the lyrics. I mean, you can find them easily if you look it up on Metallum, which is usually my go-to in case I need to find some good death metal lyrics. But yeah, wasn't really a whole lot, which is a shame because when they do start putting up uh, together a good story, they're really good at it. I just wanted a bit more of that still. Really good death metal. And lastly, we have the Subways with Uncertain Joys. These are a punk rocky garage noise rock group. And if the name of the band is familiar to you, you might know them for their song Rock and Roll Queen, which came out in the mid 2000s and was used in pretty much every action movie trailer ever. You might have heard it most notably in, say, Rock and Roller, which is one of Guy Ritchie's. It was a movie he made, that much I know. I haven't actually seen it, but yeah. Um, so I liked this album a whole hell of a lot, and I'm also giving this one an A. Um, I thought this was really fucking great. The one thing that might hold it back for me is the fact that the lead singer produced it, and he put too much auto-tune on his voice. Uh, Billy Lunn is the name of the singer, but I don't get that because his voice is actually really good. He's got a lot of charisma and personality and a really nice sort of snare to his delivery when he wants there to be one. Uh, there's new drummer Camille, I forget her surname, but she is absolutely phenomenal on the kit. This is her first album with them. I uh, like what a great job she does. And the album is the band's first in eight years as well. And I've never listened to her Subway's album before. You know, they've been around for 20 years, you'd think I would record up except for that one song, which I haven't really ever fully listened to. So, for my first actual, like, full taste of the Subways, and I'm not talking about the sandwiches, by the way, I do have a personal sort of, like, take on my favourite sandwich at Subway. Thinking about it now, I'm very, very happy. Anyway, for, for those wondering, meatball marinara on uh, nine grain multi seed bread with cucumber, lettuce, and tomato, and cheese and toasted, because it fucking rolls. And gherkin! Can't forget the gherkin. Oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> That's that's my Subway sandwich. Uh, speaking of the Subways, yeah, really good album, lyrical content, very, very versatile. I like how it sometimes flips from like the political stuff to the more um, sort of like relationship-based stuff as well and some sort of like themes of betrayal too. And it doesn't do it... Um, it, it does it really effortlessly as well. It doesn't really feel like all that jarring or all that tone deaf. The performance is great. I like the production. The guitar work and the bass work especially is really fucking good. I love the bass on this album, and the structuring is really great too. It's the longest album, actually second longest album in this video. It's only about a minute shorter than Obituaries, which is a very weird thing to think about, but there's still quite a lot packed into it. Um, I wish some aspects of the production were better because I don't think that Billy's voice needed processing that much, 
but it's still a really great um, album, and it's, I don't know, I mean, it's up there for a early favourite of the year, along with Anti-Flex, but, you know, that's not for now, I guess you could say. It was still, you know, this is only the first episode of this year. We've still got a lot more to do and so many other albums to listen to. And now we'll do the uh, ranking thing, I guess. So, least favourite to most favourite would have to be Circa Ways of Never Going Under, Obituary, We Don't Give Everything, Feeble Little Horse with Heyday, and it's a toss-up between the last two, but I would have to go with Anti-Flag with Lies They Tell Our Children and then the Subways with Uncertain Joys at the top. But as always, listen to all of these at least once. They're all really great in their own right. Uh, the next thing I'll see you for will be tomorrow night. PBW vs. AVW, the go-home show over here at the moment, which will be next Friday. And the next video will probably be a Fight of the Night review on Sunday because there was a fight card last weekend. But there wasn't a fight the night review, which is weird because the main event had Sean Strickland in it. So I don't, I don't understand the logic behind that. And um, that'll about do it. Also on Saturday night, I'll be uh, streaming and possibly finishing the stream for Metal Health Singer. So, yeah, that's all I can really think of to self promote. So I'll see you all for that. And as always, thank you for watching. You're awesome. Bye bye.